I've also looked at wider landscapes in which we see particular things taking place. And in this case, I want to talk about climate change and in particular climate change that's taken place in um, the Bronze Age. It's a prehistoric period in the UK around um, 2,500, broadly speaking, um, in the UK, um, the time of bronze. But we see in the term used as the Bronze Age has different age ranges according to where you happen to be in the UK and in Europe and the Middle East. Um, we see uh, quite some in different ways according to the environment and topography of where you happen to be. Here we have a geographical information systems digital elevation model of a place known as the Somerset Levels in southwest England. It's a watery landscape, um, levels meaning a sort of flooded landscape here with this light blue. Um, dark blue is the sea, and these ochre colours here are higher areas of the hills of the Mendips here, uh, the Quantocks here, and the Poldens running through there. And I've looked at um, where Bronze Age metalwork has been found in water in the Somerset levels. Here we have the early Bronze Age digital elevation model, and you can see these dots here are um, Bronze Age metalwork um, find spots, as we call them, places where they were found um, here on an elevated location here, and then a little cluster here and here in the water levels. Now, in the Middle Bronze Age, we find this significant climate change to a much here in the Somerset Levels, wetter, boggier place. Fresh water flooding down from the hills into the already saturated waterscape. The um, sea breaches into the levels as well. So we have a mixture of salt water, fresh water and brackish water. And what we see quite extraordinary happen is a huge increase in the objects that are found in the water themselves. We often call this ritual deposition or the deposition of material culture into water. Uh, an increase in metalwork deposition and an increase in the variety of types of metalwork that are deposited into the levels themselves. There are many ways that we can look at this and explore and consider this, but one that might be interesting to um, relate specifically to the nature of the global dialogues on worsening water crisis is are we seeing um, a strategy for somehow controlling water, particularly when we go back to the late Bronze Age when the climate balances itself out again a little and we see again a decrease in the types and numbers of metalwork being deposited. We also see the Thames or actually rivers as a focus for uh, where things are placed. Um, we're keeping with the Bronze Age just for a sense of continuity and a huge variety and diversity of Bronze Age metalwork um, deposited into the Thames itself. Here we just have an example of axes from early flat axes to middle Bronze Age, pal stage to late Bronze Age socketed axes. There are many other different metalwork types here themselves. Uh, axes that come from local and ax axes that have traveled some distance, but all placed within the river. And we see these rivers as focal points for the placement of material culture into them um, on a local and a global scale. Uh, these are all images from the Museum of London in London. We also see objects such as this. So these are connected to that Latin water culture that I mentioned to you earlier, except these are the British um, uh, evidences of them, the famous Battersea Shield um, and the um, helmet from the Waterloo Bridge here, Battersea Bridge and Waterloo Bridge, um, showing these curvilinear twirling designs that are very characteristic of the Latin water culture style. What's interesting also with these objects is as much as they look like a shield and um, a helmet and associated uh, by default in terms of their type of design with warfare, they function as anything but that. This shield would not have served you in any kind of way of protection in terms of conflict and neither would this helmet. So while they're looking like that, they are acting as something else. And here we can start to talk about material culture as metaphor. And if we link that to their placement in the river, we can open up conversations about rivers and water as metaphor. 
I've explored this in a number of ways. Um, in this case, there's paper elemental interplay, the production, circulation and deposition of Bronze Age metalwork in Britain and Ireland for world archaeology. Um, engages with the qualities of the extraction and production of the materials that are used to make metalwork, and then how we might understand the place where the metalwork is found or deposited, what we often refer to in archaeological literature as the fine spot. Indeed, the making of metal brings together many elements of earth, air, fire and water that are required in the production of metal itself. And then when we find the place where the metal is found, these waterscapes, we start to see another interplay of the transformation of the objects, indeed the transformation of the place through the act of depositing objects into water, how that can relate to a form of conjunction or biography of artefact and place. And in fact, are we talking about many types of places and multi-locality? I'll extend that further to talk here more about these particular states that I've mentioned just now. We take the solid materials of copper and ore and copper ore and tin from their solid state to a liquid state. They are me melted and fused by fire into a liquid state to create a bronze artifact, a solid artifact, such as this shield here that was also found in the River Thames. Back into a watery context, the shield is solid, but placed into the river. So we can see this elemental interplay of solid to liquid to solid to liquid. And how those, um, the materiality of those, of the, of the bronze itself, of the, of the water context in which it is deposited, are starting to conjoin or come together from solid to liquid to solid to liquid to liquid scapes to liquidity. And that opens up a really interesting way of thinking for us with regards to how people in our archaeological past perceived their water worlds, perceived the river and understood the river and engaged with the river. So the river becomes a phenomenology and an essence, an experience, a sensorial engagement. And I think this image here really sums that up rather well, taken um, earlier on this year at sunset, where the Thames itself turns pink and flows through the city.